I'm Jen Artan with the Tesla webinar team and this spotlight series will showcase one Edutech tool and show how it can be used either for yourself professionally or with your learners. If you're like many other teachers I know, it can be difficult to organize all the many things that you need to do. This is a picture of my board in my classroom and this is what Google Keep can potentially do to help organize your life. As with any Google tool, you need to have an active Google account in order to access it. To find Google Keep, well, just go to Google and type in the phrase Google Keep, and it would probably be the first search that you find. This is what one of my Google Keep boards looks like. I tend to use this board uh, to keep copies of all the interesting graphics and websites that I find related to the field. Now, once you're signed in, you can also click on the nine dot waffle at the top of your screen and look for the icon in this box and then just click where it says keep. Making a note or taking a note in Google Keep is quite simple. The board is pretty basic. You just click where it says take a note, enter your title, enter some details, and then it's just a matter of clicking where it says done. You can also set reminders. And if you have reminders set up, it will send you an email notification of something that you want to be reminded of. So in this case, maybe it's a meeting, maybe it's an assignment, maybe it's something for the class. You just click on the reminder and it will send an email notification. You can also add collaborators to your Google Keep as long as the person has a Google account. You just type in their Gmail address right there. So I'm going to type in Anna Bartosik. And then she would have access to that shared note, just the one note that you've shared with her. You can also change the colors and add an image. So if there's a particular image that you think would make your note more, <clears throat> sorry, make it stand out a little bit better, add an image from your, from your desktop. I'm gonna click on the quizzes and it just shows up right there. It, it makes your uh, Google Keep interface just a little bit more visually appealing. You can also click on the little three dot drop down for more menu options and choose to draw if there might be an image that you just want to draw. Have some fun with that. Eventually you'll have a lot of notes, so you might want to pin your most important notes to the top of your board. It's just a matter of clicking on the top of the note, the little thumbtack icon will show up, and just select it. This is just how you can change color. You can organize your notes by color coding it. You can also organize your notes by using something called labels. I'll show you that in just a moment. Edit label. It's the labels are off on the left hand side. And you can easily create labels. Now once you've got your labels created, you can go into your um, three dot and it says add label and just click on the appropriate label. Just one more way to organize yourself.
There's a Google Keep Chrome extension that you can add to your toolbar. If you do that, whenever you come across an interesting website, all you need to do is click on the little light bulb and it will automatically create a Google Keep note for you with a little picture and the website address listed right there. It's quite useful. And there's where the note shows up. You can always change your view option to list. I prefer the bulletin board type view myself, but this is what the list option looks like. When you take notes, you can also choose to create lists. So it's just a matter of filling in your list. Remember to do X. And then once you've done each item on your list, you can just strike through it and it can just keep easy track of, of what you've done and what you still need to do. To look at all the notes you have under one label, just go to the left hand side of the screen and click the label. It will bring up all your notes that are in that theme or in that group in one place. When you're done with the note, you can just hit the archive button. And there's one other thing that I wanted to show you with Google Keep. Now, this is a really interesting and useful function for this tool. Now, what you could do with Google Keep is if you are creating an assessment task, uh, particularly with PBLA or any other thing that you might be using, uh, it's really quite simple to use Google Keep while you're creating the task uh, with regards to PBLA to help you keep track of uh, competencies and items to look for when you're doing assessments in a particular competency in a particular skill. And this is what I mean. So imagine that this is your task, uh, giving instructions as a speaking task. So maybe you've already input your details, but now you want to make sure that you create a rubric that's going to make sense and be um, PBLA compliant. So you've got your assessment open. You're going to go up to where you see tools. Now, this is only available in Google Docs, but it's a really interesting feature. Tools. In the drop-down list, you'll notice that there's access to your Keep Notepad. So you're going to click where it says Keep Notepad, <clears throat> and it will open all of your Keep Notepads. So what you want to do is search for CLB. Search for your criteria. In this case, I search for CLB. Now, what I've done is I've already input my students. Obviously, have different CLB levels, so I have to kind of make sure I, I always have that information handy when I'm preparing assessments. So, I'm looking for a speaking task. So I'm going to type in speaking, right? And I've already put these details in my notes. I created them a while ago because I know that I'm going to be using them quite a bit. So I'm looking for giving instructions, speaking. So let me just slide down here. There's a five. Now I'm going to start from six. So I don't have any students that are in level five. So I'm going to scroll down. And here's my six right here. So I want to be able to look at my task and make sure that it is parallel to what's expected in the CLBs. So I'm just going to open it up. And you'll notice this is just totally copied and pasted from the CLB um, 2012 material. So I'm just going to look. So CLB 3, give it some sequential instructions, correct sequence of steps, clear references. Uh, so these are all the criteria that I would need to assess for when I do this particular task. So then I would create my rubric, maybe 
uh, if I don't have access to the Conestoga plans, um, I can use this to um, just copy and paste. So you can copy one at a time, Command C. So you're going to slide down here and create your rubric. So now that you've got all of your information from both the CLB levels that you'll be testing, um, it's just simply a matter of, like I said, doing a quick search and entering the search criteria at the top and then just copying and pasting the information directly from Google Keep. Now, of course, you can always just have your CLB PDF open somewhere and copy it directly from there or use the Conestoga rubrics, which are also quite useful. I find that I like having Keep because um, I know exactly where it is. I don't have to search through the PDF looking for the right page and the right uh, competency to get the information. And I can look at it on my smartphone quite easily. So that's one of the advantages. Plus you can use, um, you can have comments or resource suggestions or anything that you frequently include as um, formative feedback on your student work. You can have most of this pre-prepared in a Google Keep note and then just include these uh, comments onto the onto the sheets themselves. So it does save you a bit of time. You do have to invest the time initially to, to set it up, but once it's there, it's accessible um, and you can use it. Another thing I like to do with the Google Keep Notes, like I mentioned at the beginning, is to have my student CLB levels all laid out so that as I'm preparing assessment tasks, I can keep in mind how many of each level I need to be looking for. So, I mean, it is an organizational tool. It is what you use with it. But like I said, it really makes organizing my life a little bit easier. And, um, and that's always good. Okay, so the one final thing I'm going to show you with Google Keep is how to connect your Google Keep with your Google Calendar. Now, everyone has access to a Google Calendar if you have a Google account. So you have created your note. So, for example, here. And it gives you the option to click on the little remind me symbol, which is the finger with the little tiny string attached to the top. You're going to click on remind and you're going to choose a date and time. Now, if there's something that you want it to, uh, to be reminded every week or on a regular basis, you can actually click uh, custom or daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you need to do. So then you're going to save that. And then it automatically goes to your calendar. So I'll show you for example. So this is October and it says 8 p.m. Meet with Anna. So it definitely connects your Google Keep reminder notices with your actual uh, calendar. So that's really kind of cool as well. You can open it up. You can look at it. You can view it in Keep. Or you can mark it as done and it just strikes it off your list. So it's one more way to keep you um, organized, etc. And now the last trick that I'm going to show you is really only if you have access to a school board Gmail account. And this is pretty neat. And let me just show you what you can do. You can go into your calendar. I'm going to pick, say, November here. Edit the event. Google Apps for Education user or business user for with Google, you have a really cool feature called creating appointment slots. Now I've used this with my students to create PBLA appointment times. And so what you do is you open up your Google Calendar and let's say you want to have appointments on Thursday. So you're going to have appointments, we're going to touch and drag. Oops. Let's try that again. And I'm going to go right until 3 o'clock. So now I've dragged and selected this area in my calendar. And when I open it up, it gives me a chance to make a reminder or to create appointment slots. If you create appointment slots, I'm going to say for PBLA uh, consultations, binder uh, review. So you can see I've got Thursday, November 2nd from 8.30 until 3, booked for appointments. I'm going to offer slots of 30 minutes. So I'm going to create that. So then to actually access the link, you're going to open up 
your event and you'll actually get an appointment page right here. So you're going to want to uh, copy this link. So I'm going to copy that. So when you've clicked on it, for example, this uh, this is my UOIT account, but if you have another Google for Education, your institute's name would appear in the top here. So then you can see I've got appointments right from 8.30 until 3, and it doesn't show that anybody has actually booked them yet. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So when you've added, you can add guests or your students' email addresses so that they actually get a link to choose an appointment slot. And this is what it looks like. So you can actually open up your Google Calendar and it says, I've invited you to come and choose an appointment on November 2nd from 8.30 till 9. Yes, maybe no, so I'm going to click yes. So when the student creates or accepts a particular slot, what you'll see as the teacher is that you'll see that these slots begin to get filled up and the information on who is where will show up right here. So it says that, well, I've invited myself to have an appointment on this day and this time. So um, really quite simple. And again, you can always send reminders to yourself in Keep and connect your calendar uh, in that way. And finally, Google Calendars can be shared with your students and with the teacher. What I use Google Calendars for in my classroom is to, well, for students to track their time and their attendance. And all they have to do is give you access to their calendar and you can check on attendance as well. So all my students have added me as um, part of their, uh, to give access. So I'll give you an example. If I click on Rania, you can see that she has been marked present for all of these days. Um, so this is her record of, of when she's been here, when she has doctor's appointments, and that sort of thing as well. Now I can look at Rima. Rima was absent on this date, and I can actually change her color because I'm looking at two different ones, right? And Rula. and Synab has not updated hers lately. But anyway, as you can see, it's a really, really simple tool that you can use to, you know, encourage student autonomy and encourage student responsibility for tracking everything that they need to track. So, excellent. Everyone's organizational needs and challenges are different. I like Google Keep because I can use it across all of my devices, including my smartphone and because I can collaborate and send reminders. So use Google Keep and let me know how it's going.